Hi everybody, welcome back to Connor Dino Meadows Farm. My name is Ricky and today we are going to be building a cow stanchion. We brought our Dexter Jersey mix home uh, earlier this week and now we need to go ahead and build some place that we can safely milk her. We've included a supply list in the description box. We had a neighbor come and help us out again. Oh, Ash, gotta go play, out of the way. First thing we decided to build was the floor. We are using treated wood on the floor, obviously because the cow is going to be making a bit of a mess and it's directly on the cement floor in the barn. So we need something that is going to stand the test of time. There's lots of cutting. Oh, and Freya, she's in the temporary stall watching us work. So we have uh, just laid out the floor. It's obviously not all done. We're just laying it out to get a feel for it. We discovered that the stairs were actually too wide for the area and the extra piece of the stairs was always in the way anyway. So we just went ahead and cut it out. Uh, where we wanted to put the 4x4 posts, there was a big chunk of cement. So we had to go ahead and tap that big chunk of cement out. We then hammered the 4x4 post that is 7 feet tall into the stairway to give it some support and to uh, make sure that the milking stand wouldn't shift around. You can just see the floor base there, just lining it all up. The other 4x4 post, uh, we're figuring out where we're going to attach it to the stairway. And again, we just have used a really big spike and we put it into the stairway. The next thing we had to do was level the floor out. Even though the floor is a cement floor, uh, this barn has been redone at some point and the floor is far from even. You can actually see the big crack in the cement. Um, so we had to do some jimmy rigging. Um, we did attach the floor to the 4x4 posts that were there and then we added the extra 4x4 posts on the outside edge. The next thing we did was just grab some 2x6s that are going to go around the top of the 4x4s. You can see leveling them off and attaching them in here it just gives the whole thing structure and stability and of course helps level it all off. There was some discussion um, on the fact that everything wasn't quite level but uh, they fixed it all up and got it all leveled up. After ensuring the 4x4 posts were level, then it was a simple matter just to attach them into the framework of the flooring. A few more nails to put in and we will be done those four posts. The next thing we're doing is we're just cutting the rest of the upper level in the 2x6s of untreated wood. We're just gonna level off and make sure that the 4x4s are as level as we can get them. And what couldn't be leveled off, we just decided to go ahead and make sure the 2x6s were level. And it all just ties in everything together and gives the whole framework extra strength. One thing that's always bugged me about these stairs is that you always felt you were gonna fall off. Um, at one point we did have a, a box there just so that we had a little bit more stability going up and down the stairs. Um, the top of the stanchion actually gives us more of uh, a handle to go up and down the stairs and be safe while we were doing it, which is actually really great. Um, the top of the stanchion is actually going to have something built on the top. The cats really like being up high and we figured that was a really great place to put their bed and all of their food where uh, animals, other animals like the dog and uh, the goats and stuff can't get into their things. So we just put in the middle part of the floor there. Again, it is a treated piece of wood and um, we just need to work at properly leveling out the floor now. He's just tying in the pieces of wood 
What we tried to do was where there was gaps on the floor, we just put some extra pieces of the treated two by six. And you can see here on the left hand side, there's multiple pieces of the two by six. We wanted to block the ability for any rodents to get in underneath this floor, as well as to keep it uh, a little bit uh, more level. And just here, we've already cut all the treated wood for the floor, just uh, nailing them into place. floor is now complete. Last nails in. Moving on to the next thing is we are cutting the area for where the head gate's going to go. And uh, there are two pieces of two by six at the front and we want to make sure that we can fit the width of a two by four in between those two pieces of two by six. Um, and we'll show you that a little later up close. But you can see um, they stuck it down in and wiggled it around. So essentially that's what the head gate will be doing. And again, we will show you that a little later. Freya's just having a little lay down, watching us work. Chompy chomp chomp, she's so cute. All right, so here's the head gate area. Those uh, two big screws need to go through um, and the top is all done here. Now you can see what they were doing is putting those two pieces of uh, two by four in the middle and that is where the head gate's gonna be. So they're gonna swing so that it can be squeezed shut. Now in order to make it be able to swing in between those two pieces of two by six was a two by six and a piece of plywood. And down on the bottom, we're just screwing a hole through the two by sixes outside, inside, and through the two by four because that is where the big bolt and nut are going to go so that it will be able to open and close um, on a pivot. I am gonna apologize. So we were working in the dark at this point and we do have lights in the barn, they're just not very good. So a flashlight too. So you can see there, we're just making sure that they're all lined up and they're flush with the bottom. And then the clamp on the right hand side there, then we'll get added and we'll just clamp it into place and then able to drill. And then you can see where the bolt is there on the right hand side. And we do the same thing on the other side. Um, make sure that the flat side of the bolt is to where the cow will stand because you don't want them to obviously jab themselves. Then a washer and a nut and and just to tighten up and then you can see that V section it opens and closes. So this is the side rail. Uh, we measured the cow to make sure that it came up just past her flank so when I'm sitting down I'm actually underneath the board but the board is also there to um, kind of help her stay in so that she also doesn't decide that she needs to turn around when she's going out. So this board will probably need to be changed according to the size of your cow. Hi Freya. The last thing we had to do was put some sort of feed part in and uh, we put Freya in the stanchion to see how it would work. She did a great job going in um, and happily eating her grain. You can see how the sideboards there go in. So the next morning we got to working on the feed box that's going to go up in the front. I had lots of company and uh, just doing the cuts and getting ready. You can see he's just got the feed box laid out on the ground there. And we were trying to figure out how can we close this head gate so she can't back up. Obviously that worked, but it was a bit long. We did figure it out. We did use the chain, we just shortened it up. And now we just are working on measuring and figuring out how and where we're going to fit the feed box. Nala was being very attentive and helping us out all day long. So we just built the pieces of the feed box using scraps from what we had already purchased for the building of this. So there was no extra uh, additional materials needed other than what we had already purchased. And that list of supplies, again, is in the description box below. 
And while we did use a website, and I will link it below for a general idea on how to make the milk stanchion, they also just said, hey, we used uh, scraps to make the feed box. So, uh, you know, we, we kind of had to figure it out. So he ended up using um, some two by sixes and some two by fours, and you'll be able to see here through the video how he was able to put it all together. This will give you a general idea of what it's going to look like. So the flat 2x4 standing up are actually going to lean against where the screws come out and we just do a little cutout in those 2x4s just to make sure that um, she, when she puts her head down to eat she doesn't get scratched by them. I'm just cutting up a few more pieces here and that's for the bottom part and we are ready to assemble it all together. at this point it does look a little bit weird it doesn't have a front area we made it big enough to put her rubber bucket in and there there you go now you can see what the extra legs will look like sorry I had to move around he set up right in front of my camera the ground wasn't as even as he would have liked but we made it work level everything off put everything together and then uh, just screw it all together and we had a very very strong feed box. A cow does put a lot of pressure down when they're eating so we wanted to make sure that it was good and strong. Just the last finishing touches here and we were able to we'll do a quick walk around just to show you what it looks like. It's nice and strong. Um, last couple screws in the front there right next to the big ones that come through. Now you can see there how the head gate swung while he moved it. Um, and uh, he likes to make sure everything's level. So there you go, that's what it looked like. So the last thing we have left to do is, like I said, we're going to put a little platform on the top there for the cats. So this is some old uh, cedar that we brought with us from our old farm. As a matter of fact, we actually used this same old uh, cedar paneling to build our entire horse shelter at our old farm. So it was nice to uh, kind of have a little bit of our old farm at our new farm for the cats. And yes, we are using a wheelbarrow to cut. We did not really feel like taking out any kind of sawhorses or anything like that, and it works. So you can see it just slides right over the top. We didn't cover the whole thing. Um, again, remember this is seven feet tall, so a cow can go in and not feel that she is closed in in an area. But this way now the cats have a great place to go. It's not all the way closed in so it's still open and um, I can go ahead and put their bedding up there and their food and water. It keeps their food out of the way of the chickens and the dogs and up out of the way of any rodents that might decide it would be good to eat because the cats will be sleeping right there. It also gives us like I said, um, a place to hang on to as we walk up and down the stairs. It was a little bit awkward to get up and climb on there. And you can see here, I just uh, start moving all the cat stuff. Their food and water and their bed. I did eventually switch the um, way everything was set up there, but it just gives you a little bit of an idea to see what it looks like. There you go, the bed and the food dishes all up there. And uh, I have to tell you now, after it's been up there a while, the cats absolutely love it. They sleep up there and uh, it worked out really great. So the last thing we had to do was put the rubber mat down. Um, we wanted to make sure that it was easy to clean and would preserve the wood and it wouldn't be slippery. I really did not want the cow going up there if, they, if she made a mess while she was on the stand um, and I had to clean it. I really didn't want it slippery. Now these rubber mats are really thick and really hard to cut. Uh, so the easiest thing that we find to do is to actually flip them upside down. And upside down means that there is a very straight line you can follow. And so we just take an, an, a very, very sharp and very strong X-Acto knife we measured where we needed to be and with the line in place it was really easy to make sure that we got the right cut. We just followed the line right down um, and you can see 
it, it is very, very heavy. And then once it was done, we were able to use the last little piece to put on the part where she steps up. So it gives her something to uh, step down onto and then got the rubber mat into place. After using all these rubber mats for a number of years, we have learned that they can shift. So um, on the cement floors, when they're wedged in an area, we don't worry about it that much. But the last time we made a cow stall, we learned that the weight of the cow actually caused them to shift. So to avoid having the stall mat shift, we use a very big washer and a screw and we just screwed it down to the floor. And here you can see the entire finished product. Just do a quick walk around for you and there you go. Beautiful cow staunchin. And this is Freya's second time into the staunchin. The first time was uh, the previous night. She'd actually never been in the staunchin before. And uh, she backed out the first night like a pro and she backed out this time like a pro too. We'll just run you through some stills here so you can see what it looks like. I will note one thing, um, since we have had Freya in there a number of times, we definitely could have made it skinnier. When you look at the area and you think, oh, you know what, this is definitely wide enough, I have to tell you right now, it's actually too wide. The cow can step around quite a bit in there. I would have preferred it to have not been as wide for her. But on the flip side, if we ever were to get a bigger cow, it would fit in here just fine. And just to show you how she made out in it. And now you get to see the milking staunchion being used what it's intended for. This is Freya's first time ever being milked and she was doing just great. We use a Surge Belly Milker. This Surge Milker actually came to, from my parents' farm. She was a little nervous, so she pooped, so we had to clean that up, but she's done really, really well. Thanks for hanging out with us on the farm while we built this staunchion, and we'll see you next time.